Welcome to series two of the Faces of Family Business, the show where we shine a spotlight on the huge contribution that family businesses make to the economy and to the communities that they form a part of. And when you hear the term family business, you might assume a small team of people who are mainly family and it's not a particularly large business. Let me uh, throw that assumption on its head. Today's guests are Trevor and Gavin and on father and son who are part of the Mount Charles Group, which is a facilities management business that employs over 3,000 people from its base in both Belfast and Dublin. Trevor and Gavin, you are so welcome. Thank you for coming along and giving up a bit of your time. Perhaps to, to set things off, do you want to just tell us uh, where the business is at today? We now employ over 3,000 team colleagues throughout the island of Ireland. And that makes us actually, in terms of Northern Ireland, one of the top 10 employers in the province, uh, a position of which we're extremely proud. And I think it's even more remarkable that uh, in terms of the, the family business ethos, uh, we have got to where we are today without any public funding whatsoever. That's that's tremendous. That's really good. And and if you look over the history of the of, of your family business, what what sort of highlights occurred to you over that period of time? Well, one of the first things I was thinking of this before we came into the interview. Uh, whenever I formed the company in 1988, uh, I really, quite honestly, hadn't a clue what was going to happen. Right, the, the only ethos I had in mind was that literally I had to make sure there was the price of a loaf to buy on Friday night to bring home, and that, that was the re reality of it. Uh, but with the help of some of my previous uh, clients in, in, in the, the multinational organisa organisation that I worked with, uh, we formed a base very quickly and established a, a good company. Uh, in terms of highlights, uh, the, there are a couple of highlights. The first is the first contract I ever got as Mount Charles, right? And it was a social security office in Shaftesbury Square in Belfast. And at that time, I didn't have very many contracts and I had no government contracts. So I bid for the, that contract and uh, I don't do this now, but I, I, bid it, I bid it knowing I was going to lose money on it. But I was awarded the contract and that therefore established me as an accredited supplier to government buildings, right? and uh, went from strength to strength. Uh, that followed on with a number of other contracts, including the Odyssey Arena, where for 13 years I was the provider of food and beverage services, and then on to such places as the Waterfront Hall, and uh, now the ICC Conference Centre, where, where we're there on a long-term contract. So if you take time to look at our portfolio, uh, it is marked out with some of the top, top blue chip organisations in Northern Ireland. I think, I think that's interesting from, from people's point of view because so many people will have encountered your services without necessarily being aware of it. You're kind of behind the scenes almost in a way. One of the things you talked about there was the multinationals and the difference that you have as, as, as a family business around some of the core values. Do you think that's some of, some of what's carried you through over those years and seen your su success? Yes, well, uh, I've had some of my career history working for multinationals, so uh, I know how they think and they operate. And uh, whilst I enjoyed my time with them, but the reality is that you are just literally a number, right? Whereas whenever I decided to form Mount Charles, all of a sudden I was no longer working for a multinational. There was no p funding to keep me going if needs be. So I had to make decisions to make the company uh, uh, viable. Uh, but as the company progressed, uh, I realised that I couldn't obviously look after everything myself. So I set about bringing in a team of professionals most of whom had worked for multinationals, right? And uh, they, they, will, uh, they will mention to you that in the early stages, moving from being employed by a multinational to be employed by a family business was a transformation for them. Uh, it's also a fact that because it's a family business, uh, we can literally make decisions whatever we want. But if we took that stance, I wouldn't have any team because there'd be no point in them being there if I wasn't uh, allowing them to show their entrepreneurial skills and making in terms of decision making. And Gavin, if we turn to you then in terms of the highlights over the history of, of the family business, 
at what age were you dragged in and, and, and subjected to work? There's a, there's a clash of dates sometimes when, <laughs> when, when real work started and stopped, mind you. But yeah, I, I had the luxury of um, going around some of the earlier sites that my dad had, had won and operated. And that was an opportunity for me just to experience what was life was like within that space. It's very different now because we've naturally evolved into a different market and our contracts have naturally changed. But from an early age, I was able to see what hard work looked like. Um, and then I did, did my own things for a little while and then came back into the fold and learned from you know, grassroots up about what, what had to be done to make this a really strong family business. Luckily, all the building blocks were there and the pieces of the jigsaw made up the picture. But I think for um, future thinking, we're now at the stage where we're evolving into something that we should all be exceptionally proud of and is a real important part of society. So the mouths that we feed, as, as you said earlier on, uh, we don't call it six degrees of separation at Mount Charles, it's probably about one and a half. So likely somebody knows somebody who has worked for us at some point in time. And equally, you and others have likely touched our services at some point in time as well, which is a really proud story because that tells you that we are a really important part of, of every, everyday life. The values that we have within Mount Charles are do the right thing, have fun and grow together and take pride in what you do. So if, if, if we keep doing that, we're, we're not in a bad place. And thankfully, most if not all understand that that's what makes us tick. And do you think those values that you're referring to there, do you think, what, why do you think family businesses in general are such a strong part, such a backbone of the economy? I, well, uh, talk, talking for us in particular, I think we go the extra mile and provide that ultimate experience that should be unrivaled. Um, we make mistakes and we're honest about that. So I think what unfortunately some of our competitors do is when they make mistakes, it's somebody else's fault. When we make a mistake, it's our fault. And we put the wheels in motion to get that corrected. Um, I think the ethos of family businesses are really important about how they conduct businesses and uh, make sure that they deliver what they promise. That's the big um, ask mostly of family companies and it always should be done to the best of your ability. And that, I think that's how you can see how important, you know, over two thirds of the private sector in Northern Ireland is, is family business focused. That tells me that we're a really important part of the cog. So if we don't get it right, then it goes wrong for a lot of other places. Absolutely. And uh, Trevor, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? What, what, what's the secret ingredient to family businesses? Well, I think it's the fact that uh, if you showing some entrepreneurial uh, aspirations, you can create your own family business as I did back in 88. And, uh, I was always blessed maybe with an entrepreneurial instinct somewhere along the line. Uh, but I think that what makes us stand out is the fact that uh, even though we're a very, very large employer, that doesn't make us impersonal. In fact, it's the reverse. We actually place an awful lot of emphasis on the fact that it is the family business. I'm Trevor, that's Gavin. And we walk in, we talk to, to our, our colleagues in the units and everything else. And I'm proud of the, the fact that whenever I go in, they would say, hello, Trevor. It's not, hello, Mr. Annum. It's, and that's, that's, that's fabulous, that sort of ethos. And, and I think in order to achieve the growth that you've achieved, that as an organization, you've had to, to develop and bring in experts from mm -hmm. uh, larger corporates and so on, Trevor, that there's good um, discipline in that for a family business to see that growth. It's important to remember, and uh, I don't necessarily like making this comment, but you know, I haven't done everything right throughout our journey. I have made some howlers of mistakes and some very, very costly ones. Uh, but lucky for each bad one I've made, maybe there's been two very good uh, decisions. And, uh, but I think it's important to just to mention that, you know, we're, we're all fallible and mm. I don't have the gift of being perfect in everything. And it's nice whenever I sit down and talk to people, maybe some of our team, maybe they've done something wrong and they're worried about is their job under threat or whatever. I say, well, like, hold on, just let's talk this through. You know, you've made a mistake. What can we do to learn about it? And we'll go ahead and we'll not do it again. Oh, thanks very much. And then they go on and they learn from it. There's, there's something in that honesty that I think a lot of the kind of social media age kind of overlooks. It looks at the, the great things that are working really well and fails to acknowledge the importance of what you're learning through failure, that, that there's so much <laughs> in that that you can benefit. And, and taking risks. Yeah, so yeah. You know, there has to be risks to be able to, to meet the rewards. But uh, just one other point there, 
when we do have some individuals who have come across from a very rigid corporate background, some of the feedback we get is, I didn't know work life could be like this. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they've, they've been through a really rigid structure and you know, family businesses, as you know, Darren, with the rest of the um, family forum, we have agility and we have flexibility and we have the chance to make decisions as and when they need to be made. But going back to our values again about having fun, you spend most of your life in work and the rest you probably sleep and then the rest is what you do in between. So if that time that you spend most of your life at is not enjoyable, you shouldn't be doing it. That's a fact. And if you can do it in a place that you really enjoy it and you're passionate about, people will perform. They'll be willing to excel and they'll want to make a genuine difference. Well, well come on to one of the big questions around families in, in a family business. I mean, conflict is something that can, can emerge. There's benefits to the, to the bonds in the family as well. Do you want to talk through who's involved in the family business and, and perhaps any history of, of, of how you've dealt with any conflict in those relationships? Well, in the early days, it was me, full stop. And uh, I could not have done what I have done without the support of my wife, Kate. She has been an inspiration for the last one. In fact, we're 50 years married this year. Uh, but that's another Congratulations, story. Congratulations, that's <laughs> good. She's uh, also the real boss, so yeah, that's yeah. to be noted. <laughs> but, but I think whenever we started the company, first of all, it was me, full stop. And then bit by bit, I was able to bring other people in. But uh, Christopher, actually, our, the eldest son, he came into the business, first of all, in a, a relatively junior capacity within uh, our vending department, right? And then has now moved on to be an integral part of the company and looks after vending and logistics and is also uh, heavily involved in sales. And Gavin, the child, came in much later. And uh, as he said, he went round some of the units to find out what was going on but he has found his niche in terms of the sales and marketing in the end of the thing. We, we don't really have many disagreements in the, in the organization or in the family. Uh, I think we have the ability of talking things through, right? Uh, and uh, that, that's very important, but we must remember that whilst we as the family may, may wish to do something, that I also employ a lot of very highly professionally trained colleagues who have their views on what should, we sh should be doing. So there has to be a balance between what we want as a family, what my colleagues want to drive the company forward and finding, finding a, a medium. Trev and, and me in particular, we think very differently and what he would do, I wouldn't and vice versa, but we find the, the happy medium in the middle. So I think when you have those conflicts, it's, it's a good thing to make sure we're not having you know, like-minded thinking and also that can make the company very insular and in that you're, when, you, when you mentioned earlier on about bringing in expertise, like I'm a firm believer that you get the very, pers the very best person who can do that job in the very best possible way. It's our job is to provide that leadership and the entrepreneurialism to make sure we can get to the next level. But um, the conflict, I think having conversations early is really important. I think it's never too early to have you know, difficult conversations, laying roadmaps, making sure legacy plans are in place, and also making sure everybody's aware that we have a plan in place for um, Mount Charles 2.0 and 3.0 and for the rest of the foreseeable future. So my, my big takeaways is talk early and talk often. Very good. And I, and I think the flip side of that point is that the family bond leads to a cultural connection that's really strong and that other people can look towards and uh, it does yeah and and, and you don't biologically need to be part of a family yeah. i think that's an important point for mount charles like we we do recognize and call ourselves one big family and whether you want to work with us part-time full-time or a lifetime we'll we'll set the path for you and treat you like one of our family members and we always we also expect people to you know do what they should for the technical business family that we have so that that's just a different way of conduct i think and it reminds people that in a family unit, it's got to be together. It's got to be fighting for the same cause and being there for each other when things go wrong and also celebrating the wins because that's a beautiful moment, particularly again in families, when things go right, we should be all happy about it. Very good. Very good. So we're here to talk about the faces of family business. And this was an exhibition that was organized by Ulster University just at the end of last year that you took part in. And each of the exhibitors was asked to reflect on their own family history. What, what did it feel like when you were asked to, 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 to come along to that? It was a privilege, yeah. And I think when, when you have an opportunity like that, it gives you a chance to stand back and reflect. And when you see, when you see pictures on a wall and when you see people inspired by what a company has done, like when we, we had the pleasure of attending the event, and we were in awe about the other companies, about yes. the journey that they had, the struggles they had been on, the iconic moments. And then, of course, when you, when you 
take that time to stand back and reflect, you go, this is, this is incredible. And the iconic photos that we used were reflecting family and celebration of our team members, and also an iconic photo of my dad right beside the very street where he chose his name for the company. So the, as the, I'll, I'll steal his thunder a little bit on this, yeah. but um, he stood in that corner of the street when he had no money, no name or no office. And within 15 minutes, he had a name, an office and a business in, in, you know, ready to rock and roll. So that's just a, an iconic moment that I think you can capture for the rest of your lifetime. And indeed, just moving on from that, the the, the photographs on the, the that, that we had on yeah, display so, on the day. So, so you had three artifacts to, to kind of select and reflect in your own yes. history, well, your was, photographs, and, and, yeah. and, and the, what the, were those? Well, the first one was the uh, the, the immediate family, yeah. i.e. Kate, myself, and the three kids. And we thought that was a nice photograph to have because that is the Annan family. And then moving down that, uh, we then had a photograph with the grandchildren. I think there's one more has been added since. That was uh, my fault. There's <laughs> one more since. <laughs> uh, but that demonstrates, you know, the, 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 first, the first photograph was that of the, the core of the Annan family. And the second then was maybe perhaps the next generation coming through. So that was nice in terms of a family business and maybe a succession plan. Yeah. But the last photograph was at our Trevi Awards dinner. And uh, we hold this every year. And last year we had oh, over 500 team members at it. They're all invited to, the night, uh, uh, to join us for the evening at our expense and they thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, but that is really the essence of what we're all about because whilst it is the Annan family and whilst there are grandchildren there, the fact is that if we don't have uh, team members on the ground providing a service, we have no company. So that was the rationale between, uh, uh, in terms of picking the photographs. A nice celebration of where you've come to as a company. Yeah. If you go from that inception of where the Mount Charles name came from right up to that awards ceremony where you're celebrating your your wider team success and so many people. Incredible, really good. Part of what we're talking about here is the, the strength of the family story and the family values. How, how do you uh, stop that becoming a kind of a polished PR line that you're using rather than the underlying values of the company? Well, you, you should never take them for granted. And when, when I mentioned earlier on about our, our values, about how we conduct ourselves, you know, do the right thing, take pride in what you do and have fun and grow together, they're, they're easy to say but harder to do. And it's it's important that people are reminded about them and they action and implement them into everyday life and in our, into our workforce. It's easy for us to sell it to clients and have shiny graphics on the wall, but you can feel it in a family company and that's the most important thing. And you can see the tangibility of it when people do have fun. So we have loads of, you know, we had a smileometer in our office that hope it would be at 100% every day. And there's bad times as well, of course, but we celebrate those and make sure that we, we get them fixed. But to, to see them happen is where the magic is and also watching people grow is is a really powerful story so we'll set learning and development opportunities for people and if they want to go on a career path with us we'll lay the path where it's that may feel like an inconvenience to some other companies where it's going to cost time and money but when you see that that light bulb moment or eureka amazing talent in people we've got to harness that and make sure that we can capitalize on it to give them a chance to succeed in the rest of their working life and 3,000 plus employees suggest to me that you're delivering and, and it's working. You know, as you say, the test isn't so much the statements you put on the walls as, as to how people are acting in their posts and their roles. And, that's it, yeah. that's it, yeah. yeah. And reminding them of why we have them, yeah. 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 And um, when we look, at, we look at succession around the family business and we look at uh, potentially, you know, you haven't come into the business and where it's going in the future, was it an easy thing, Trevor, as to bringing Gavin and Chris through the business? Is that, was that an easy decision? I, I think it was probably easier for me than for them uh, because the reality is that they're coming into a business owned by the Annan family. So they will always be treated as uh, the sons of Trevor. And uh, well, whatever they do, well, Trevor mightn't have done it like that or well, he wouldn't want you to do it that way. So they're always living under that cloud. But the Christopher and, and Gavin, they have the ability of being able to rise above that and if not, not, I don't mean literally, but fight their own corner in terms of how they handle situations. Our other colleagues in the company, they also realise that it is a family business, will always be a family business uh, and it's going to be headed up by either the two boys at some time, uh, whenever the old fella decides he's hanging the hat up. And uh, I mean, Part of the, the, the big step for you to take there is to step back and let Gavin and, and mm. you know, go ahead with decisions and, and, and give him that autonomy. And Chris, is that easy to, to, to work through? 
I think it's, it's back to the plan. So yeah. you've, you've got to be mindful about who's doing what and when. So roles and responsibilities. And also, uh, I got, I'm a firm believer to, to, to flick off a switch from my dad's expertise and, and capabilities, that, that would be the opposite effect. So it's harnessing what he is exceptionally good at. For example, we've, we're in, in the middle of implementing our new five-year strategy. Um, it was under three components, which is about great people, great service, and great future. There's no better person <laughs> than my dad who can help deliver some of those key components of the strategy for us to get to the next level, particularly around people and service, because that's how the company was formed. Mm -hmm. um, so, and as long as we know what the plan is, everybody else knows what the plan is, and that gives a bit of comfort to the rest of the team and also our clients that we're going to be here for an exceptionally long time and we're going to keep doing what we're doing. So it's all, it's all around good communication, but uh, there's so much in, in you being able to step back in the middle of that, Trevor, and you realizing the wisdom that you can access and playing to, to the strengths of that knowledge and experience. And you, there's no, there's no, um, there should be never a hard stop with these things. I think yeah. Mark, Mark Twain's quote was, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. And if we get into the rhythm of doing lit, little bits and pieces that gets us to a gradual point where there's a natural synergy or a, you know, a common acceptance that we're, we're ready, ready to move on to you know, a, a stage or a phase change over as such. Um, and everybody has to be ready for that as well. I think that's the most important thing. And uh, do you see in terms of the next generation, Gavin, that have you, your kids are quite young at the minute, you're probably a bit away from that. Do you see that something that you'd want them involved with or give them the option of being involved with? Well, I think my, my little girl who's three, I think she's probably ready now. She's a, <laughs> she's a bit of a powerhouse as, as is my six year old. I think they both could probably tackle it, but no, it's, it's beautiful to see what that future looks like. And um, it, it, again, it's never too early to start thinking about that. You know, people naturally kids have to choose their own career path, and but you can certainly present the options and remind them about why family business exists and the generational shift that that has to go through. But and equally on Christopher's side, um, he has uh, two beautiful, very capable kids as well. So uh, I'm sure between all of us, we can sort something out when that uh, point in time comes. I suppose one of the uh, one of the issues I'm facing now and uh, I'll leave it for others to decide how, how well I'm doing at it, is the fact of me letting go of the reins, right? This is my baby that I gave birth to 35 years ago, and I still, I'm still i still having uh, some psychological factors in terms of letting go of the thing. You know, sure. there'd, be, there'd be a part of me, maybe a little bit arrogant to say, nobody can run as well as I do. The other part of me, which should be the 95%, which says there's an awful lot of people can do it better than you and let them get on with it. But I just love what I do. I love the, the business I have. Uh, there will never be another Mount Charles. And what I mean by that is whenever I formed the company in 1988, it was against the background of two multinationals dominated the market and little Trevor from East Belfast came in right, with nothing right, and did what he did. But today, 35 years on, there are now 10 or 12 multinationals in the space. So if, if somebody decided to do another Mount Charles, they probably would they'd be eaten up within a matter of weeks or months. So again, uh, maybe the timing was right. What I did then was what I had to do at that time. And 35 years on, it, it appears to be working. Very good. I think what, what, having visited your head office, one of the things that, that struck me is the beautiful illustration you've got going up the stairs. Yeah. Gavin, talking about that 35 year history, do you want to, to say a little bit about that? Yeah, so, so we were lucky enough to acquire a new building and we outgrew our, our previous office, which is never a bad thing. So in 2016, we had to, again, think about the future, getting a home for our team members to enjoy and do great things every day. So we moved up to Ormer Road. Um, created that into Annan House and I was uh, thankfully not thankfully throwing the keys and say go sort that out and make it a cool place to be. So uh, we have three floors on that building and we have a beautiful staircase that in my eyes when I first looked at it was the perfect canvas to tell our story. Um, so we had chosen 12 to 16 um, key events that had happened in Mount Charles from 1988 right up to 2016 that in my opinion had felt were the key moments, the good, bad, and indifferent about how we got to the top of the stairs. And as a pleasant surprise to my dad, um, he he was called in to the, the official opening of the office to let all our team members celebrate, but he was brought down an hour early. And um, I, I told him I was having difficult with keys and I needed to come down and see it, but that was his moment to let him experience that time. Like. That must have been brilliant, Trevor, because I've walked it and it, for me it's a moving experience. You know, it's yeah. much better than a PowerPoint deck of 16 points of history. I mean, for you, I'm sure that was fantastic. Yes, well, 
sometimes I like to think I'm a very hard-nosed individual. Mm -hmm. The reality was that on that morning at 8 o'clock whenever I opened the door and saw the staircase, a tear came. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. That's lovely. Yeah, it's lo powerful lovely. moments. Yeah. And a lovely uh, history. Indeed, history yeah. And again, that those moments in time that made a business. We were also um, part of the Good Friday Agreement journey and my dad was lucky enough to be in the room when the agreement was signed so he takes does take a wee bit of credit for that that he got it done um, because without the teas, exactly. coffees and, and full bellies it's we know we're like yeah. in Northern Ireland we have to be well fed and then as the journey went on we started to get bigger but also more personal about the services that we delivered um, how we diversified into new things and ironically some of the service lines that we have today so we're catering cleaning vending security and large-scale events most of them only came because clients asked us could we give it a crack so and ironically our cleaning um, service line started because one of our clients got let down and um, they asked way, way back when we um, started off that service line, um, look, I have no cleaners today, is there anything you can do? And we sort of met it, you know, methodically thought, okay, well, we can do cleaning pretty, or we can do catering pretty well. Surely we can have a crack at this. So we got the materials, we got a couple of people hired and said we'd give it a go. And, and now cleaning is, is the uh, major part of our business. Again, just maybe developing that for, for a small moment. Uh, it's another uh, interpretation of the, the value of a family business. If, if we were a multinational, we would be confined to the line service lines that that company dictates. Whereas within our own company, Mount Charles, we dictate what happens. And as Gavin said, and it was quite simplistic. Uh, we were asked, could we get involved in cleaning? Well, yeah, we don't know a lot about it, but we'll give it a go. And now, as Gavin has said, we're uh, in a position where cleaning represents a significant part of the whole company's revenue stream. So we've touched on our government here as we come to a close in the interview. We've touched on the fact that, that you were there at one of those key events, just Trevor. Executives now back in place. Family businesses are a huge part of the economy here. It, it would be my thought that more could be done. Is there anything that you think government could be doing to help businesses in your sector? Um, what I would say is that I think it's important that local government recognises how much importance local businesses, particularly family businesses, have right here, right now. And if we do re represent that over two thirds of the sector, let's be mindful about what impact that has if it does, if it went horribly wrong tomorrow. There's a lot of people to feed, there's a lot of um, mortgages to pay, etc. It could be a, you know, a catastrophic, but it's also a really good positive outlook that we're able to get to the place that we are today. So on, on the way of help, I think it's making businesses as, as, you know, the path of least resistance is what I usually put it in. So how easy can business be done here, both, you know, with FDI investment, external exporting, etc. Are we making that as easy as possible? We've also got the beauty of, um, you know, the, the trading lanes that we've got here as well on the back of recent decisions. So let's harness that and make sure we're capitalizing on it in the best that we can. But I th just to contextualize it, I would say, let's make sure that the government can make this path of least resistance for us to keep doing the exceptional things that we do. Essentially less red tape, Gavin, is, is yeah, one of just the things here that... Speed of, speed of decision yeah. making, I think that's yeah. important. Also access to information and intelligence, speaking with our, our represent, re representatives from departments and, and ministers, et cetera, and making sure that they have, which they do right now, which is fantastic, but they have a clear understanding about how difficult it can be to do business here. If we look to close matters off, if I could ask each of you, if you had one piece of advice for other family businesses out there in terms of growing and scaling, what, what would it be, do you think, Trevor? Oh, a difficult spot. one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think, well, live by your dream. Uh, if you have a vision of what you would like to do, go for it, but don't go for it in a reckless way. Uh, take advantage of all the uh, research facilities that we have through the universities and everything else. Research your product that you would, or your service that you would like to get involved in and talk to as many people as you can to find out if there's a niche for what you want to do. And once you make a decision that you're going to do it, go for it. Gavin? I stole my thunder, but I, I would say regrets worse than failure would be my summary. So I think if you, if you have an opportunity to grow and succeed and give something a go, it's easier to deal with the failure than it is the regrets because if you if you haven't given it a chance, that's the harder pill to swallow. So yeah, re regrets regrets harder than failure. Yeah, good. Trevor and Gavin, thank you so much for uh, relating the story of Mount Charles to us. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this as much as, as as we have. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Faces of Family Business, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one.